prestigious science journals don't just publish great peer-reviewed, interesting research. They also occasionally publish opinion pieces, and despite their high quality standards when it comes to research, sometimes their opinion pieces are, well, what's known in sociological terms as complete garbage. Uh, The most well-known science journal, so well-known that they just called it science, has recently done just that. Megan Wright is a doctoral candidate at University of Toronto, and she is very upset about a serious problem facing academics today. Female scientists posting about science on Instagram. It's difficult to parse exactly why she's upset about this because her op-ed is so terribly written. But from what I can gather, her primary complaints are that she feels that using Instagram for science communication is extra unpaid work that women have to do. Uh, And also her problem seems to be that the only women who do it are pretty and interesting and fashionable. Her first point could have been a good one. Uh, Women are often expected to do extra unpaid, thankless jobs. But unfortunately, she doesn't include any actual data to support her premise or her conclusions. How many women are doing this compared to how many men are doing this? What about on other social media networks like Facebook and Twitter? How many do it because they love science outreach and they like... Instagram, as opposed to how many are doing it to reach equality, as Wright suggests they're doing. Instead of this, Wright uses a single data point that she opens her piece with, uh, Samantha Science Sam Yaman, a woman with a popular Instagram following who talks about science on Instagram. And Wright doesn't actually manage to get around to linking to Sam's Instagram, but I have done that in the transcript that you can find below because I'm not an enormous jerk. Uh, Sure enough, though, Science Sam's successful Instagram account looks like a successful Instagram account. The photos are crisp and pretty, the selfies are aspirational, and the descriptions use a lot of hashtags and emoticons. Wright whines that female scientists on Instagram represent a narrow view on femininity uh, in the sciences because she doesn't appear to understand that that's what Instagram does as a whole. All successful Instagram accounts look similar for a reason. You need a certain look to your photos in order to attract followers there, whether you're a man or a woman or a dog or an adorable cow. I follow a cow on Instagram. I almost empathize with Wright about this point because I have an Instagram account and it has a paltry 2,000 followers. Compare that to Science Sam's 18,000 followers. And I sometimes see my fellow nerd friends with huge Instagram followings and yeah, I get a little jealous. But then I stop to think and I realize that there's a reason they are popular on Instagram and I'm not. I don't do the things that are necessary to have a successful Instagram account. I feel stupid using hashtags. I post loads of photos that aren't aesthetically pleasing or just aren't even interesting to the average person or anyone other than myself. I post things that just make me laugh. Uh, And I don't specialize in a particular category, whether that be science or food or drink or dogs or travel. I just post whatever I happen to be doing or thinking about. And yes, this video is a blatant attempt to get more people to follow me on Instagram so that one day someone will pay me to post a photo of me drinking wild turkey or something. But I know deep in my heart that that won't happen because I'm not good at Instagram. So yeah, I follow scientists on Instagram and I also follow them on Twitter and on Facebook. And if Wright is worried about the narrow view of femininity presented on Instagram, I suggest she look at the women doing science outreach across all social media platforms, because it is in no way a narrow view of what a female scientist looks like. For instance, Asia Murphy posts under the hashtag who's eating Bambi over on Twitter to show nature trail cameras uh, showing shots of woodland predators. And she's on Instagram too, for the record. Uh, And there's not a selfie to be seen if selfies are for some reason offensive to your delicate sensibilities. 
Dr. Katie Mack uh, discusses astrophysics in easy to understand terms, though she did recently retweet a photo of her with Stephen Hawking. So maybe that makes her ineligible to do science communication. I'm not sure. Uh, Dr. Rachel Burks uh, is a chemist who often makes chemistry accessible by discussing its relation to pop culture. And, oh, yeah, she gave a talk at a AAAS meeting about how social media is integral to her career. A lot of what these women are doing is unpaid and thankless work. But as neuroscience PhD Christine Liu pointed out on Twitter, the answer to that isn't to write a hit piece about one of them. The answer is to thank them for the previously thankless job they were doing. Megan Wright and the editors at Science should honestly be ashamed that they published an attack piece shaming a fellow female scientist simply because she made a successful Instagram presence to communicate science to the general public. To answer Wright's question about whether she should post more about science than about baking on Instagram, allow me to speak for everyone when I say, no one cares. Post photos of empty toilet paper rolls if you want. But for people who enjoy using a particular platform to increase public public interest in science, just keep your terrible opinions out of the pages of reputable science publications. Put those on your Instagram where no one will read them. That's better.